Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Bluetooth Controller. I have the white one here. Uh, this is the model that works with the Switch, as you can see on the back. should say Switch on there, yeah, look at that, lovely. This is the white edition, and I have been using this controller for a little bit now. I've had it for about two months and this might be one of the best alternatives i've ever used for the switch now before i go any further you've probably just seen my cat walking away there um if you hear some cat hissing and stuff in the background got we got a kitten recently and uh, they're not getting on particularly well so i do apologize for any cat sounds going on back there but um yeah so the 8-bit do all my controller um fantastic fantastic controller that's what i gotta say on this i really really impressed with just how good this controller is um, we have the controller itself which i'll get to in a sec and we also have the dock now the controller sits nicely on the dock like this it actually slots in there's some pins and it's kind of hard to see there's those little pins on the back there that slot in and slots in beautifully like that i will say now that i've had a dock for this controller specifically like i really enjoy having a dock uh for my controllers this isn't going to stay here, is it? Okay, but um, the actual dock itself, you have your USB-C into the back of it. Cable goes into the back of the switch, right? Um, there is also a light bar along the bottom here. And this is essentially, this tells you when it's charging, I think. Um, I think when it's also connected to the switch, possibly. It definitely has uh, a use. And the good thing is, is I know that this controller can turn on the switch as well. I feel like this is a lost cause, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, because of the, what this this thing is used for, you can also use it for the PC uh, as well. And in the bottom, right there, is a little USB. If I can get it out. It unclips. It kind of fits in at the bottom. And this allows you to use the um, Wi-Fi booster on it. So you can connect this to your PC or whatever and, and use your controller for that. Uh, the, obviously, or if you've got Bluetooth, it's currently automatically set to Bluetooth anyway because uh, of the switch. So yeah, that's the little dongle dock that comes with it. Very, very nice. Um, this is, I don't know why I keep fiddling with this because it's just not gonna, it's not gonna stay there. So I have to fix it another time. Anyway, the controller itself. This is what it looks like. You can see it, it's very suave, very nice color. Um, Decent sized sticks on it. Apologies about the cat meowing in the background. Nice buttons raised up on it. Decent shoulder buttons. Um, on the top, you have the sync button plus the US where the USB goes. Um, and on the bottom, or on the back, I should say, on the back, you have two back puddle pedals. Uh, paddles, pedals, paddles, whatever you want to call them. You have the switch on the back, and you also have the three prongs there for the charging. So it does just slots in when it's charging, very, very easy. So the, cause when I push start pushing buttons, this light's probably going to come on the top. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's just the home button. But in comparison, size-wise, we have the Pro Controller that I normally have, and we have this one. So you can see there is a little bit of difference in size. Um, this is a bit smaller, but I wouldn't say it's any worse than this one. Like the D-pad and the bottom analog stick are a bit closer. The face buttons are quite close together. But other than that, like I would say they're mostly identical in terms of how they feel, in terms of like comfort. Like this one, the, the Pro Controller always has it just feels a little bit longer. It's quite nicely spaced out with all your with the analog sticks. This has got a lot of space to it. Very very comfy to put your butt fingers on the buttons and whatnot. And these parts feel a little bit grippy. Whereas this one is a little bit smaller, the actual front of it is very smooth, and then on the back, it's kind of hard to show this, but there is like a textured grip to the back of it along here. So, the basically where you would put your hands, that's where the grip is around the backs of this controller specifically. So, let's talk about the actual controller itself then. So, the face buttons feel nice, clicky. Very, very nice. They're not as raised as the Pro Controller. So if you see where my finger is like that, they're all kind of a nice size. The Pro Controller, they're a lot bigger 
raise buttons, very hard to miss these. Um, in terms of, I would say there's a little bit more squidgy. Yeah, they don't have a huge amount of travel time on them, but they do feel a little bit more squishy than the Pro Controller itself. Um, the analog sticks, which is one of the reasons why I think people have been buying the, this controller, um, is simply because these are Hall Effect analog sticks. And what that basically means is it's magnets under these, rather than the physical connection that you get on a lot of other controllers. So the idea is that you're unlikely to get uh, drift. It can still happen, but it's supposed to be significantly less likely. Um, Dreamcast apparently had these as well, but these analog sticks, they feel great. They are a bit smaller, they are a bit smaller, but they feel loose enough. They've got a sort of, they, they flick back to the middle nicely. They, they feel loose to move, uh, but they, they do feel good. They got very clicky as well. So they're good for that. Uh, in the middle, we have the start, or yeah, start and minus, and then like the star, home, and then the middle button, the other middle button we'll get to in a sec, but where we have plus and minus here, almost not quite flush to the controller they do stick out a little bit so you're not going to just run over and touch it by accident um but they do feel they feel good to use as well as the star button which is the capture button for the switch and then above that is the home button uh which if i push it's going to start flashing which you probably won't see particularly well on camera but when it goes when it goes white it's basically invisible um so we have that um and then at the bottom there by the way are the lights for when it's connected which i will show you when i do play a game i have actually turned the switch on you doing it so that's pretty cool <laughs> now now you go the switch is now on currently there you go it's the player one um it will turn itself off in a sec when the switch goes off but essentially you have all those buttons in the middle feel very very nice they're, they're not they're, they're, you're not going to run your finger over it by accident you're definitely if you move your finger across the controller you're going to hit it and feel it um the what is essentially the home button or the heart button has a bit of texture on it as well in that shape and then the button underneath which is kind of hard to see the one that's like got the three lights underneath it that is like a um setting for the controller so you can have the controller set up in different ways now one thing i don't have which you can get with this controller there's an app which is like the 8-bit do app or i can oh, an app or something and you connect to it and that lets you fiddle with so many settings on it so like the joysticks the different um setups you want profiles is the word i was looking for different profiles for the controller um what the back buttons you want to have them as i think you can do these anyway and by the way there are back buttons on this controller i have yet to program them to anything normally they i think it's quite easy to do but they themselves are very similar to the uh pvp stuff they're not as big but they will power a one of the two they, they feel decent like but they sit nicely, they're easy to get to. But yeah, you can use an app and do all kinds of stuff with this. The triggers, what are the triggers like? The, uh, the L and R are quite chunky, but they feel really nice to push. And Z, uh, L2 and R2, it just says on there, but basically the Z buttons. These are analog. These are actually analog buttons, unlike the Pro Controller, which is all digital. Um, they're a lot more clicky. Ooh. I might actually prefer the LNRs on this top one. And I've always liked these, but having analog back triggers always feels better, to be honest, on a controller. So overall, this this these buttons at the top, very, very nice. The last thing I want to talk about that really I haven't really mentioned is the D-pad. Now, you can probably see that, that is a very classic-looking D-pad. Now, 8-bit though have a lot of controllers, and you would have seen with the SN pro i think you see sm pro that their d-pad is much more like a snes d-pad so here's the d-pad for the pro controller it's not a bad d-pad a lot of people shit on it but i don't think it's a bad d-pad uh it's not the best it's, it's maybe a little bit small it doesn't quite have the travel time you want but it's not a bad d-pad whereas the d-pad on this thing is very much like it's got lots of travel time it's nice and chunky i haven't actually tried a fighting game out on it I'm not sure how good it would be for that, but for like 2D games, I played Shovel Knight on that, <coughs> and I will show off like the D-pad later on, um, just sort of showing off how good it is for games. Um, I will say this: this is probably one of the best alternative controllers I have used on the Switch, if not the best. Um, most of the controllers I buy are wired. This is one that I've bought that is wireless and 
I love like the Afterglow PDP controller, and I really rated like the um, other controls. I haven't got the Metroid one up here anymore, but like the Metroid controller I had for Switch, uh, that was Power 8, I believe. There's a lot of control. There's a lot of really good third-party controllers for the Switch now, and it's kind of hard to uh, say which one is like the best one. But I think right now this is the best third-party controller that I have used for the Switch in the current state. So, yeah. Very, very, very good controller. Um, obviously, the switch on the back, by the way, switches it to uh, the Wi-Fi as well. So you can have that on the 2.4G. Um, but currently, it's set to Bluetooth. So let me get everything set up. And then I'll show off a couple of games. Show off um, 3D game, 2D game, and show you how good this controller is. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna show off this controller with using Mario Kart. Uh, we're gonna do a time trial, or at least to show off, so it can't get smacked around and whatnot. We're gonna do again solo race, and uh, let's let's check out how this controller feels, so you guys get a, an idea of what it's like in game. Um, obviously, this it's a shame I don't have a racing game that has uh, analog steering because it probably would work. But all right, triggers. Lovely, no problem there with the steering. All good on that one. Nice and responsive. You donut in this. Oh, you can burn out. Nice. <laughs> Hop works fine. Easy to drift, as you can see. No issues whatsoever. Which button is it to look behind? I look behind button like there's no I'm not having any issues with this controller at all it feels really responsive like hopping being able to drift easily no problem it gets a level 3 drift so you can see that this controller just I mean as you'd expect it works really well with 3D games this is a really good example of one I feel because you get to see horn <laughs> So yeah, no no issues at all with uh, with the game. Uh, you can also use the D-pad here, just to show that off. I don't really use the D-pad for Mario Kart, so this might not go particularly well. But I'm not having any trouble steering, really. And this is a good track to try it on, because there's a lot of tight turns. As you can judge my driving. <laughs> but yeah, no problems with this. So let me hop out of this. And we'll jump into uh, some 2D games so I can show off the D-pad, how it works in that. Alright, as always, we've got my uh, favourite 2D game to try it on. Or well, one of, anyway, Donkey Kong Country. So let's see, let's see how good the D-pad is if we have any misinputs. Not getting any down there. Feels really good, and just so you guys can see, I am using the D-pad. Oh, got one then, but feels really responsive. Feels, this feels great for platformers, actually. I'm not going to lie, this is a really nice D-pad. Um, see if I can... If it's any good for doing the backward or forward slap. I've never been amazing at this, but I can get it to usually work. Come on. There we go, we've got the backwards on. Oh, we went to the core banana horn as well. Good job, me. Alright. Feels pretty good. Let's try it with um, a different... Try it with a different game. Going to my other favourite being Mario. Uh, what have we got? Mario Brothers 3. That'll do. See how see how we fare in this. So it's a game that I love. Dropping myself right in it though, right at the last level. But am I having any issues with the controls? I don't feel like I am. Feels really good to use. The buttons feel responsive. I'm not having any any issues with the inputs. I always forget how you do this. I guess you duck jump into it. Which oh okay, so trying to like duck move a little bit difficult. I know that's a really specific thing anyway. Never mind. Uh, but overall, like I'm not having any issues with the control here, which is <laughs> obviously what you would want when you play any kind of platformer. Um, yeah, so D-pad feels really, really good. Joysticks feel really, really good. So, overall, very impressive controller. Considering how, just like, how good this is, 
I would almost say to people that you might want to buy this over an official Pro Controller. Now, with my other options I usually go for, they are cheaper. They are wired versions, they are cheaper, and they are good because you're paying £20 you know, roughly about that, 20 to 30 pounds, which is half the price of a Pro Controller. This is about 60 pounds, so it's about the same price as a normal Pro Controller. Okay, you're not going to get the uh, HD rumble. It does have rumble down the sides, it's not HD rumble, right? But what you are getting is probably a better D-pad for your 2D games. Um, you're getting a charging dock, so it's very, it's, you never have to worry about the cables, you just plonk it in, it's all done. You're getting uh, the ability to use macros and be able to mess with the buttons on this with the app if you want to do that um you can also if you buy this particular version of it you can get the um the wi-fi the, the cheaper version doesn't come with bluetooth but i think you can still put the dongle in like i think potentially to still use it um i've not tried it if i'm honest but i would say if you're interested in getting a, a really good solid controller that isn't the official pro controller and you're maybe thinking hang on a minute these these are less likely to have drift this might be the controller for you and i i strongly recommend um this is just a really really comfortable solid controller like i said it's a bit smaller and there are some minor things about it that maybe you're not as comfortable with that it's a bit bigger a bit chunkier buttons stuff like that but this is definitely one of the best controllers i've ever used it's third party like f hands down and everything that i've reviewed so far or given feedback on uh, of controllers it just goes to show how much better third party controllers are now power a power a like we've got power a pdp you know um and we've got 8-bit dough and obviously nintendo stuff there are other third party companies out there that i haven't looked at yet and we'll get to them but Quite frankly, 8-bit Doe, Power A, and, and uh, PDP are the ones that I have used so far and had good, good um, time with. But 8-bit Doe definitely have the premium quality that you would expect for it. And I do think this controller is easily worth the same amount as a normal Pro controller and would definitely recommend it. So if you're thinking about getting a controller and you want something with a, that has less chance of having... Um, drift and has all the profile options so you can set up for different games has your back paddles um also allows you to use it on a pc or a different console then this is a really versatile controller and i couldn't recommend much else or be on this unless you want something that's significantly cheaper in which case get a pdp or a power a so there you go there is my thoughts and review of the 8-bit doe ultimate controller Come, uh, what i like about 8-bit doe very no nonsense boxes you know exactly what you're getting by who and what the product is um yeah there it is so thank you very much for watching as always if you like the video hit like if you want to see more content like this then hit subscribe i do have some other power a controllers not power a eight bit dough controllers to show off um links for facebook and twitter will be down below in the description as always and until next video i'll see you then